Is there anybody there? Is there anybody home?
Hey, Spike. Hey, Spike, you there? Yeah, I am. Are you there? I am. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me okay? I can. Can you see anything? Okay. I'm, yeah, I can. It's just you and me. Are we it? For the, for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how this is going to work, work out. So, Okay. So what do you see now? Uh, how to share your screen, May 20, 2022 Zoom meeting. You can see that then. Yeah. Page two of 36. Yeah. That's just the number of slides. This is good. All right. Not sure. I'm not sure how to make you bigger, but this will do. So, how you been? I've been trying to make myself bigger all my life, Tom. Well, we all, you know, most of us suffer from that, but. <laughs> <laughs> If I was only half the man I thought I was. <laughs> so uh, you did no. You remember Steve Thompson? Uh, yeah. Uh, he came and visited with us. Uh, um, oh, it's a while ago now. We almost did today, but our signals, um, schedules didn't didn't work out. Well, that's too bad. It, I won't yeah. Hey. In fact, you at least keep on trying is important. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, is Roy Perez going to join us today? I do not know. Don't know. I do not know. Um, I'm, uh, all I'm doing is being a, a sad stand-in for John Crowder, who's uh, okay. On his way back from Hawaii, so there was no guarantee that any of this was going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I. Um, I almost missed the date myself. Hey, listen, Tom. I've got um, uh, I've got a um, a buddy. In fact, he was a student of mine a hundred years ago, um, when uh, with the core in Orlando, that wants to get. Uh, he, he's got. We we have gotten back together again. We kind of meet regularly for lunch and so forth. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten crazy about wanting to get a hold of all the um, Air Force Academy um, recordings. And I don't know how to tell him how to do that. I think Roy Perez has put that on somewhere, has he not? He has. Um, a lot of it is available through on Facebook through the Keith Markey Memorial page. Okay. Roy's I've been I've been around there, but I can't. And, and I'm 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 not real good with this computer. I I haven't found out how to do it. Um, from from that from the Facebook page, you know maybe maybe that might be a good thing, um, a good subject for one of these to do. To I don't know if anybody else is in the same boat I am, but that Probably. that might that might be a good subject. That's actually not a bad idea. Uh, John Crowder has always offered up help, but maybe we could actually like, do that one time. And because I know it's possible to, to show that and then explain how you get there and what you're looking for and, and, and doing that. That's not yeah. a bad idea, Spike. Yeah, cool, cool. Cool, that's, that's, that's good, Tom. Forgive me. Uh, uh, well, you can't see me right now, but you can see where it says Zoom meeting, right? Right. I can see both. You're. Um, it's just you and me over on the side, and I can see the Zoom meeting. Okay. Here's 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 the deal. Um, all I Sound can like see. All I can see is you, and I can I don't have anything on the side right now because I'm doing. I'm trying to do screen sharing. So oh, okay. I, I, I can't see everything. I can't see all the guys. So, uh, or well, not that there's any other guys just yet, but. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
Excuse me. All righty, I have made my note. Very good. Mike Ruggiano dropped me an email about seven o'clock tonight Eastern and, and uh, said he couldn't find the email, so I reforwarded it back out to him. We'll see what happens. Okay. So what part of Florida are you in? Um, right now, right now I'm north of, uh, north of Orlando in the center of the state. Uh, closest town is, uh, Leesburg. Leesburg? Yeah. As an L E E S B U R G? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Cause I, I'm about where I live in Virginia. I'm about, uh, 10 miles away from Leesburg, Virginia. <laughs> Is that right? Yep, seriously. Oh, I thought you were I, I I thought you were up there in Pennsylvania. I marched with a drum bugle corps out of Pennsylvania, uh, out of Hanover. Okay. Uh, the Lancers. Okay. 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 I'm not, although I'm not doing any marching this week. I just got back from uh, uh I just today is my first full day wearing a shoe and sock again. I had to, had some foot surgery uh, two weeks ago. Who just joined us? Mm, Dick Anderson. Dick, can you hear me? No, he's muted. Dick, unmute, dude. Hello. Now uh, here comes Gary Hodges. Hey, Gary. Gary, can you hear me? Don't tell me everybody's muted. Uh, <laughs> Dick, go on, on on the bottom over on the left-hand side. There's a mute um, deal. Punch that, and uh, you'll be able to talk. I do like having this quiet conversation, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> are they still are they still both muted? Um, Gary, Gary's not showing at all, just just his name, blank screen. Oh, okay. Gary, if you can hear me, say something. And Dick Anderson is still muted. Great. Well, I know my yeah. output's got. I know my output's got to be working, otherwise you wouldn't hear me, Spike. Yeah. Hey, Dick. Do you know how to unmute? How's that? Hey, I that's great. Perfect. You do. Didn't, didn't look far enough on the bottom of the screen. I got a got a hodgepodge of crap on the on the window right now. You do? Yeah. What do you What do you see? May 2020 Zoom meeting in the middle of the yeah. screen. Is that somebody, you, you doing that? Yes, me. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you're at the right, if you see, can you see that one next? Yes, that's, I remember. Okay, very good. Then we're, uh, we're doing better than I, better than predicted. John Crowder's not here tonight. He's uh, flying back from Hawaii. Oh, that's a nice, nice affair. Is great, and I think I've got a picture in the. I think I've got a picture here in the slides. It was, I think, his 19 year old granddaughter got married. It's, I believe, oh, what it was. Nice, cool. What island on? Do you know? Hang on, I've been to Hawaii once in my life. 
<laughs> I know there's islands. No, I don't know if it's Oahu or what, or the big island. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have had the good fortune to be over there several times. It is lovely. Well, it was so long ago when I went. I was still up in uh, up in Anchorage, actually, and uh, I'd gotten over there. And much to my amazement, we stopped at a McDonald's, and and actually the side of rice was way better than the French fries. So there you have that. <laughs> 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 Where are you at, Dick? I'm in back in Illinois. That okay. the picture behind me is one a picture from one of my one of the place we visit in Arizona, an arboretum that we like to walk through. But uh, the back of my room here isn't that picturesque, so I forget I put something in there. Cool. Well, if, if you can see what if you can see me here, uh, you're getting the same dull look that I always have. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good, John. <laughs> We're good with that. <laughs> I was going to put a different picture behind me with Spike standing with his ha our hand on my shoulder when we were in New York in, what, it's a 2012, 10 years ago. We took some pictures of the reunion. Uh, the, oh, really? Yeah. Let me, let, oh. me see, let me see if I can find it. That was, that was a great reunion. That was, yeah. that was just... That was a wonderful thing. Uh, that was just. Where was this? In New York. Scranton, in Scranton, right? Oh, back in 2003. Was that was it that long ago? <laughs> yeah, it was 2003. It'll actually be. That was the 30th anniversary. You know, the 30th anniversary, and, which means that right now we're almost 20 years past that. There's oh, a scary thought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, that one night, I don't know how we did it. We had a ton of us on the um, telephones. And uh, Diello, you know, Diello, well, anybody yeah. heard from him, by the way? Not lately. I'll, I'll be darned. I'll be darned. That's neat, Dick. Yeah. That's neat. I anyway, Diello made a comment when we were... Um, you know, trying to put that reunion together. And uh, it was just so prophetic. He said, uh, I believe this is going to be a life-changing event for a lot of guys. And that, that, that turned out to be so true. Actually, I went out and bought a mellophone after that. I wanted to play some with, some with somebody someplace. Had visions of playing with the Royal Heirs and their their senior or their reunion. Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, trophies with one of their guys, um, anybody, the Cavaliers, whatever their reunion was, if I could play, but I, I never got hooked up, so I still got the mellophone that I never, I never played. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Yeah, well, it is my, that's me. <laughs> so, I Gary, can't... are you there? Gary Hodges? Gary Hodges, can you hear us? I keep seeing like a little activity that says he's trying to connect the audio, so. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. on now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. You, you, don't, you don't have a pit. You don't have a picture up yet. No picture. No. Recognize that voice, though. Oh, geez, look at that. <laughs> wow, I'm look flying at that. high now. <laughs> yeah, floating right up there. <laughs> I should have jumped here. out of the balloon. <laughs> Yeah. Must be Albuquerque. <laughs> Must be Albuquerque or something. <laughs> Page. Hey, uh, Page, Arizona. <laughs> What's a well, page? Let me do my John Crowder imitation. I have no idea who's going to be on tonight. Uh, I've heard from a few folks that <clears throat> we know are not going to be on tonight uh, for one reason or another. And um, I'll give you my, assuming Joe Credian doesn't show up, I'll give you my story about that. Uh, Joe uh, was on a trip to New York or someplace back that direction. You know, he, he lives out in, uh, out in Kansas. And uh, he uh, went out for a wedding. Anyway, so they, they stopped at Woodstock on the way back. Well, come to find out, Joe had been at Woodstock in 69. 
Uh, man. <laughs> and he, he had been there, so he had some shots and whatnot. And so it was kind of giving him, a few of us were giving him a hard time because of, uh, a year and a half later, of course, he arrives at the academy with a slightly probably different looking haircut. And <laughs> so I told Joe, I said, well, while you were there, uh, a few of us were still drum coring at the academy waiting for you to arrive a year and a half. Ago. Who, who is that? Joe who? Credian, C-H-R-E-T-I-E-N, played bass drum. When did he get to the academy? Pardon? When did he get to the academy? I want to say it probably was mid seventy or early seventy one, something like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I okay. was probably, gone. Probably so probably seventy one ish. Yeah. yeah, I was okay. gone. Going I was there. gone too. Me too. Okay. Good guy though. Um, and uh, Gary, let's see if memory serves me correctly. You were at Ohio State for many many moons, and uh, Joe has been teaching at Fort Hay State. Uh, out in Kansas for, for years and years and years now. So, uh, a lot of interesting stories here amongst the group. It's amazing what the sad drum and mule corps people can do over the years. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, I'll give this speech one time and then we'll move on. But um, I'm being John Crowder tonight because John's flying back from Hawaii. Uh, his granddaughter got married out there. Uh, so he's someplace either in the air or doing a 20 minute layover in Los Angeles or something and couldn't be here. So I kind of tried to pick up the pieces. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll, and I'll pull the slides up here. Uh, some are not gonna make much sense because not everybody's on board, but we'll kind of do it anyway, if that's okay with you guys. Fine with me. Okay. Sure. Well, you may recognize this shot as I'm sure you have, I've seen it a thousand times before. Always good to come back to this, actually. Spike, uh, was, are you in that? No, that was after I was gone. That's Lichens there, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, that was after I was uh, after I was gone. When did you leave, Spike? I left in June of 70. So I actually was only there with you for about a year then. I guess, because I got there in uh, uh, June of 69. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, I, left, I left January of 69. That's true. Uh, you were only legend. Uh, you, you were just the stuff the <laughs> legends were made of when, when I got there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Greg Likens. He's, he's up in Pennsylvania now. and he, We've got his phone number. We've got his uh, email address. And and he just does not come out to play. So there you have that. Didn't we probably meet? all recognize the guy, Sprano player in the far left, our, our friend John from uh, Texas now, I believe. Gary, Gary Hodges. Didn't, didn't we meet Likens in um, basic training? Wasn't he down in? I think in so. So I, I yeah, wasn't sure who was there. Yeah, he yeah, ran I the Lackland Corps for quite a while. Okay, that's it. That's, uh, that's why I know him. Yeah, Likens was in uh, San Antonio. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, this is the old uh, USAF uh, Drum Mule Corps out of DC. I, Zarfoss is not on tonight, but um, I'm, I keep thinking this is like 54, 55, something like that. Yeah, ton of drums. I can't but believe how many drums there are there. Well, here's a piece of trivia for you, Gary. Have you ever seen the old guard, uh, the Fife and Drum Corps? Yeah. Pictures, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a number of those guys. Um, as a matter of fact, um, they did a little clinic. Uh, the core I, core I marched with here, the Lancers out of Hanover, PA. Our home show was in April. And uh, so an element from the old guard came up and uh, did a they did fife and drum thing and, and uh, also did clinics at the same time, too. And uh, if we thought we were good, those guys are just beyond fabulous. There's some real talented musicians in that group. Anyway, they run 12 snares and eight bass drums currently as, as their battery with the old guard in the fife and drum corps. So if you, if you look them up on Facebook and, uh, and get up there, and, and uh, if you, and you can uh, actually, they do a lot of stuff on Facebook with their music. And... Uh, just some great people to work with. So anyway, just I digress. That's and, what I was uh, 
more people familiar with this, Gary, you should, surely you know this one. That was after I left, too. You're kidding. Then we were in with that one. I'm pretty sure I'm in that picture. Set up a long line of people. Maybe I wasn't. That's Harvey, right? Yep. The yeah. And, and you, the date on that is wrong. That wasn't 69. Yeah. That was 67. earlier than that. 67, maybe. That's what I was thinking. Because uh -huh. I, was, I was in that, and it was one of the earliest things that I remember doing. So I would say that was... The, de the date on that's definitely wrong. I don't remember that at all. I remember Garrison. He's over there giving a peace sign on the drum. Yeah. I wonder what, any, anybody know whatever happened to him? I know he's from California. Yeah, he was. From the LA area. But I don't know what happened to him. He's a strange dude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it said about any number of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was an alien. You're thing. not here anymore. Yeah. 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 All right, here we go. This is the reason why. Uh, his oldest grandson was graduate. Oh, his graduation. What Mary was oh. graduating <laughs> from high school. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, hang on. Sorry about that. You can call that a senior moment. Well, yeah, that's it. I'm sure that's it. Thanks for thanks for making me feel better about myself. He has 19 grandchildren. That's amazing, isn't it? Wow. Oh. I have six, but anybody else got grandkids? Is that zero or three? Zero. Zero. Maybe one. I would, on say, I would say Crowder is uh, uh, covering the averages. Then. <laughs> yeah. Pretty amazing. Uh, the Crusher had good looking kids and grandkids. Uh, I don't know why he did. This is John. So, once again, I, I, claim, I take no credit. You know, hopefully, only blame. And so, synonyms for hello, everyone. How's it going, bro? Good day, folks. Good day, guys. Good evening. Good day, everyone. Uh, mahalo, something like that. Aloha, take your pick. Anyway, um, <laughs> I thought that maybe one of these days I would do a, a once in my life <laughs> kind of thing, and I will, but I just want to assure you that John's education is not yet complete because hazmat is with a Z, not an S. Um, actually, I've, I've run hazardous materials response teams for uh, over the years and decades and whatnot, so Wow. Maybe maybe in June I'll uh, talk a little bit about where I was and, and what I, a few of the things that I've done. So John was a little early on this one. But if anybody else wants to volunteer, and Gary, yours still sticks out in my mind, believe me. I had no idea about that experience at Ohio State. And uh, we were hoping Bob Zarfoss would be here tonight, but he's not. And uh, Bob had gone through a number of his photos. I'm going to see if I can't. Um, oh. I'm going to. Lieutenant Dordery. Ha. Ah, that guy lives in Florida. Okay. Because of the way we're doing this with the screen sharing uh, kind of affair, I can't, I can't see past the, one of the thumbnail pieces. So, um, Bob knows these people, and, I, and obviously, you know, most of us do not for the most part. So, um, he did, uh, he and I, he, he talked about Truman, I think, at the last meeting, and uh, uh, yeah. I did not realize that True had uh, uh, perished from uh, ALS. Uh, Bob had told me about that because uh, I've got yeah. a friend who was just diagnosed not too terribly long ago. How old is he? True. Your friend? No, your friend. That's just. Oh, she's maybe sixty. Probably sixty. Yeah. Wow. It generally generally hits earlier than that. If you're going to get. It. I do know that she's doing a. 
basically an experimental program because you know what what is there to lose and you know why not try so yeah yeah anyway. so uh there we go a couple of shots here from back in the day and i and i do love those drum heads of those bass drums by the way really been the air force the, the dc core yes it is wow I remember my high school band, we wore spats also. Something you don't see a whole lot of anymore. Yeah. And again, this is sort of like a Truman based slideshow, but uh, and Truman been up in your neck of the woods, Rip, Dick, hadn't he? Yeah. No, we'll see see that again. I believe he went work Royal Airs and uh, other yeah, things. Yeah, he, he wrote a lot of music for the Royal Airs. Yeah. That was got some good, good stuff too. Oh yeah. I think he wrote the flying machine. I'm sorry? I think he wrote the flying machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. He wrote it for the Royal Airs. Yeah, yeah. But we did such a swell job with it. <laughs> oh, it was great. Remember marching in San Antonio, we played it every block. Are you talking? Uh, you talk about like the Fiesta Flambeau parade that nighttime gig? Yeah, we that was way back in 65, 66, maybe, 67, somewhere in there. Went yeah, down to Santa because Canada. we did it. We uh, we were we were at that also uh, I want to say somewhere between well somewhere between 69 and 74, because I've been down there March also. So mm -hmm. longest damn parade in my life. Oh god. <laughs> The longest parade. Anyway, and real torches, you gotta love that. And uh, here they are again, someplace in Europe, unknown. They did a lot more traveling than we did. I mean, we, we uh, traveled. Yeah. They, were, they were all over the world. Yeah, they did the international jobs, no doubt about that. The, I remember for, I don't know why, but for some reason, we could not leave the United States. Yeah. CONUS, you remember CONUS? Yeah, continental United States. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember why either, with what, why the restriction, but such as it was. Well, we were more ambassadors of the Academy than uh, Air Force, I thought. I'm sorry? I say, I think we were more ambassadors of the Academy rather than the Air Force. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> uh, guilty as charged, I guess that's the only way I can look at this photo. <laughs> <laughs> Having a great time somewhere. Tech Sergeant. Bob thought this might have been V spot. George Lucas, really? Yep. And the F 100s in the background. Well, the I'll roll it up so I can actually read it. I remember them flying, flying in uh, at the cadet graduation ceremonies and stuff. Wow, those guys are amazing. They still are amazing. <laughs> wow. That's true out front. Yeah. To the best of my knowledge. That looks like him. Yep, yeah, it does. Face and the glasses kind of give it away. Yeah. Guess who? Well, he didn't give me the answers to these questions, okay? I just thought I'd share that with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. That would be 
Bob Webb, I believe. And you know, that looks almost, I say almost like Ray Foster, but I can't be sure. That's, that's who it is. Yeah, that's, that's been on here before. That was Ray. It Ray's up in uh, Denver right now, I think, or, and I forget, maybe he's going to a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's why he's not on board. He's out of town. <laughs> I think we've, uh, well, maybe not. But <clears throat> so Smitty and, uh, Smitty and Kathy are still up in the uh, Metro Boston area, by the way. And uh, so this is his excuse that even though uh, he has, has been very talkative, he does watch the Zooms, he, or at least he gets to the video. Um, I don't know if anybody ever followed his, his career at all, but Smitty ended up, uh, he was with the uh, grocery store chain uh, up there for years and years and years, manager and whatnot. Um, so he kind of came out of that. A number of years ago, I believe he had a heart attack and open heart surgery, I think. I, I mean, I know he had a, a significant heart issue at one point in time, a number of years back. Anyway, so glad he's still with us and Kathy's still with us. And kids are doing great. If you, uh, if you follow, take a look at them at all on Facebook. Um, I think your son is heavily involved as a, as a Sox fan or something in the in the area there. They've got grandkids now too. So. Yeah, and they're they're good friends and stay in touch with uh, Pat McDonald Gills. Gills. I'm glad you said that, Spike, because oddly enough, there's Pat. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's it's, yeah. It, when before Gil and Pat moved on base, they lived with us in uh, Colorado Springs. We had a two flat. They were upstairs. We were downstairs. Yeah, we spent a lot of time with them. Yeah, they're, they're great people. That's oh. great. At least I think so. Well, I got another picture. Then I let me show you that. I'll tell you what, if you if, can, you pull it up behind you, or do you need to? Uh... I'll pull it up behind me. Yeah. How do, you, how, how do you do that? <laughs> uh, you got to go, like, go to the Zoom. You go to the Zoom.us um, app, and then you go to preferences, and you go to background and, and effects. And there's Gil and me. Yeah. Oh, that was at Scranton. Yeah. Yeah. Pull yeah. It yeah, you can't miss the hats. I've still got mine. Yeah, I do too. That's yeah, shirt too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we see. We see. Well, we talk. Bonnie, my wife, Bonnie, talks to Pat quite often. See how she's doing. Thanks for pulling that up, Nick. That was a good time. Yeah. Oh, Gil. Yeah. And, uh, here we go. Oh, Hard to believe man. it's been uh, rapidly working on Ooh, 10 years. In a, wow. in a lot of regards for me, it, it's like the, the, my phone rang like yesterday or the day before. I guess that's a function of age, too. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Oh, good guy. Good buddy. I, I went up and visited them a couple of times, and, uh, and I went with Gil over to, um, they call it America's Thanksgiving in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Uh, big, uh, big drum corps thing, parade. Um, it, it's, a, it's a fun thing to go to. Well, uh, we, well we I, had, we I, had. Ran into, I ran into Smitty there a couple of years ago. The, uh, the Lancers, we've, we've performed at the, uh, at the show there in the parade uh, over the years. And, uh, at we're Plymouth? Due back, we're, due, we're due back again this year. And yeah. Caballero's alumni and, you know, the usual Blessed Sack alumni. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, quite, quite the cast of characters, actually. And it, it, it is a fun time. And it's good. And by the way, if you're so inclined, and if you're uh, 
if you take a look at YouTube, and I'm not going to, not that I'm trying to sell the Lancers, but uh, uh, Crusaders alumni is there also. Um, so it's, it's not like, it basically is your major alumni organizations that are still left. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so if you're so inclined, you can go up and you know, look it up on YouTube and uh, see some of the shows. So I, I recommend it just to get a feel for it. And that's all I'll say about that for the moment. <laughs> and? Yeah. Wow. Ah, but it gets better. Hang on. There we go. Wow. Mm. <laughs> I, I can't read the script, but we'll take a look here at the next slot, at the next shot. I think we know who those two people are in the background there. Still can't read the script. Well, that's because musical notes. You can't read. Oh, ah! <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you may recognize coming out of that baritone. Dum, da, da, ring a bell. Oh, yeah. Therefore, so. <laughs> Off we go. There you go. I don't know who played oh, yeah. Gil or somebody else, but there it is. <laughs> I think, did Paul play for his funeral? I don't know if he did or not. I think, I think he did. I think Paul did. I think I, I think he did. Paul Mayer? Yeah. Hey, speaking of, uh, somebody remind me about uh, uh, Taps Across America. Uh, don't, let, don't let me forget. This is, there's only three other people on board here. Why? I've got a, at least a 25% chance of semi remembering taps across America. <laughs> Anyways, that's Gil Stone. And uh, when I saw that, I thought I was just kind of taken by that. It only, it, it's only fitting, I think. Yeah. Now, if I could just figure out what was going on down here in the bottom, of course, being a drummer, even though I played timpani, played timpani and stuff like that, uh, if it ain't bass clef, you, you got me fooled. Anyway. <laughs> Sometimes I think we, but we do celebrate the people that are gone. Uh, this is a friend that you guys, a friend of Bob Zarafoss, as you guys don't know, um, and he had Tom uh, Gibby Gibbs, and Gibby is great, you know, pretty great drummer actually, and he and Bob played together since what high school, I think, junior high actually. Um, so you know, you talk about a relationship that goes down the years, and. And uh, with the Air Force Drum Corps, and then after that, whatnot. Anyway, Gibby passed on here not too terribly long ago. Um, I, I mean, I can't carry this off like Bob would, and hopefully he can talk about it at, the, at our next gathering a little bit, give you that personal touch. There have been some really, truly amazing musicians that, uh, that uh, we've been, that we, as I say, collectively, as, as part of the Air Force Corps and, uh, and the Air Force Academy Corps, been involved with. And uh, I think we've been fortunate for that. Anyway, so Gibby was a good friend of Bob's, actually closer to a good friend of Bob's. And there they are out there in the middle of somewhere, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> kind of an arid climate. Maybe this is Tucson before it grew up. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's my house. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, a quarter, that's a quarter million dollar property now, right? Yeah. <laughs> At least. It's like me. I didn't know I was living in a $600,000 fixer upper. Oh, I'm like, yeah. what happened here? <laughs> yeah. It's not a joke. Property assessment went bam. Went, ah. Anyway, there they are they're out there. You know, people always ask, was the kite band part of the core? And the short answer is, yeah. <laughs> so. Is that our Eisenhower? Trooping that. Who's, who's the guy in the middle? Oh, uh, you mean the officer conducting the, yeah. re the review? Yeah. I don't, let me, let me take, scroll back up here. Just, uh, nope, not there. And I don't know that I have an answer for this one. Sorry. It'll be, it'll be a good question to ask, though. I don't know. This yeah. may, may have been a NATO commander. Uh, who, I, I just don't know. 
Yeah, I doubt that's Eisenhower because he Eisenhower like was already already president, I think, at about yeah, the time the yeah. was formed. Yeah. Yeah. But they certainly got around. I think the part that I love about this, and, and Bob can pick out, I think that's Bob's second from the left, I believe. Um, if you look behind the court, the crowd, the kids, and stuff like that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Oh, and uh, sticks were done a bit differently back in the day. <laughs> Gary, Gary, you, did you learn to play that style when you were when you were beginning? The the style. Well, the east, you know, the East Coast, uh, East Coast kind of look with the stick, right stick up, left stick up, up high. Oh, like. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, I ran all my rudiments down from that position. Yeah. I was showing that to some of my kids over here at the high school the other day, and they're, they're like, how can you play a role starting like that? Well, so I showed them, and they're like, oh, my God. Did somebody just join us? Yes. Who? Hmm. Paul Olivier. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Oops. I may have I lost the slideshow, so if uh -oh. I did, I apologize. Uh-oh. And, and, bear with me, I don't, I don't know if I did or not, so. so oh, oh, no, don't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I told you there were no guarantee, okay? It would sadly appear. That I did. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. You had it up on top for a while. <laughs> oh, let me try one more thing. See what happens. And again, let's see. Uh, oh, not going to happen. Okay, well, I apologize. Whatever I clicked on, I just killed it, so... We have our sympathy. We all do it. <laughs> Let's see if I can, can't come back to it, but bear with me here. They call this dead air and radio. So I'll be back <laughs> with you guys in a few minutes. And things are going along so well. Oh, I got it. Wait, if I can still see Gary, there's still hope for life here, so. <laughs> I'm here. There you go. You got it. Well, we'll see. Can you see that? Yeah. Not perfect, but uh, I'm not going to gamble on trying that again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I have no idea what I did exactly is the problem. So, so we guessed who that was, and we guessed who that was, and we got through Gil McDonald, and I do like that. We would, had gone to the desert someplace, trying to figure out who this was in the middle. Here we go with the crowd behind. 
Okay, we're talking about drummers. That's fish where fish. we were. Yep. <clears throat> there we go. Anyway, like I said, Gary, so there I was. I've been, this will be my 12th season working with the local high school drum line here. Uh, they, they still are amazed that you can actually snap a stick up in that position and make contact with the drum head fairly expeditiously. <laughs> so it's just a question of what, you know, what you, what you grew up learning how to do. And uh, occasionally I'll, I've got a CD of Frank Arsenal doing the 26 rudiments. And I kind of, yep, I had it on LP also. But uh, anyway, so I got the CD of it. And I, I crack that out every now and again. And they go, but, 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 but how do you do that? Well, practice is how you do that. Although you and I will never be our small. So <laughs> anyway, moving rapidly along. So here we go. These were the, uh, memory serves me correctly, uh, the Air Force Corps, and Bob has said this before, the Air Force Corps, and I don't know if I can make that any bigger and I'm afraid to try, so I apologize. If I could just see me like, you know. John Ruth, I'll be doing so what's what's going on here is uh, <clears throat> the, well, these were the Air Force guys Corps had York. an awful lot of folks who were right from York, Pennsylvania, or the immediate area. And this is a picture of those folks from York. And it's amazing they had that many people from one locality in, in the organization. And uh, that's Zarfoss. He's fourth from the left or third from the right, take your pick as you look at it. <laughs> anyway, but I've always found that kind of astounding that they actually had that kind of uh, group from York. Bob had, uh, had been talking about airplanes a while back. Come back up here. Anyway, so the ever infamous C-47 on the left-hand side. And um, I remember at the academy, we took a flight from the academy up to Cheyenne, F.E. Warren, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And uh, we, we were in C-47s and uh, a couple of C-47s. And traffic on I-25 was passing us on the ground. <laughs> That's the one you're, in the, you're in the air and cars are going faster on the interstate than you are. Of course, there was never any kind of wind problems along the front range there. So. Yeah. And uh, I think everybody's nemesis there in the middle, the C, ever lovely C-119. I think out of all the aircraft I ever flew on, that was the one that just scared living, living crap out of me every time I got on one. Well, we were always told if you lose an engine on a 119, you're going down. Yeah, well, you, you take off from Pete Field, which is now, it's a joint base now, Peterson, whatever it is out in Colorado. But, uh, you know, you, you, you take all the runway and you clear the fence by, what, <clears throat> by about, at the end of the runway, by about what you thought was three or four feet. So it was never a comforting sign. <clears throat> I remember when we, whenever we went west, we had to go around the mountains. We couldn't go over them. Oh, yeah, you had to go through the Rockies, literally. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then they made you wear your parachute. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, because by the, by the time you hit the ground, the chute wouldn't have opened anyway. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but uh, it was always fun with that one. You know, you, if the weather was semi-decent, well, you'd fly out the back end partially open. So. Yeah. Explain that to, explain that to modern citizens. <laughs> Yeah, we're just heading down the heading, heading across the uh, heading heading out of a different state and got the back door of the airplane ready to go. And you sure as hell didn't want to jump out that that passenger door on the on the left on the left side where the uh, where you flop your butt right into the engine. Anyway, yeah. but I digress. And then there's the ever infamous C124. There's the 120. Where's that? Which one is that? Not the big one in the front. Yeah. That's we what, had uh, a, uh, that bad was a experience double. with one of those coming back from Utah. Was it Utah or was that the flight out of New York coming back? Well, we had a bad one coming back from Utah where uh, Timmy ended up in the hospital because one of the crates broke loose 
in there. It was on the way to the graveyard, and it smashed up against them. And uh, we had a cracked wing when we landed. <laughs> that was a and uh, Tim Baker was uh, picked up by the ambulance and brought to the hospital. Yep, I remember that. Actually, Paul, my memory says that was a C-54. It was, uh, and you're right, there was like a six-foot crack in the wing when we landed. Uh, the crew chief went to do the walk around and was like, thought he was going to pass out. And uh, you're right, next stop was Davis Bonathan. But uh, we were on board one of these coming out of uh, Newburgh, New York. We've been, we've been out uh, to the military academy playing, playing out there for a game and, and whatnot. And uh, on at, right after takeoff, uh, they lost control basically, and uh, as the mountains were coming up to meet us, and uh, everything kicked back in. The the uh, story was that the um, automatic pilot had cut in on, out on its own, and uh, so I guess the cockpit crew was up there waggling the stick, and nothing was happening. So, but that was uh, the one. On the bottom was a double decker. Uh, so we had yeah. uh, that flight out of Newburgh. We had the, uh, it was the complete band squadron. Uh, it was the band and the drum crew. I enjoyed those 124s. Um, a lot of, a lot of the times, I think, well, a lot, I think about three times the um, air crew that we had on those things, the, the um, commander of the plane was uh, a lawyer from Miami. <laughs> and uh, he, he and my dad uh, uh, were in law school together. Wow. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I had a, I, I enjoyed those. And then he, he uh, you know, I, I like to sit up there uh, with them to see what was going on. That was pretty cool. I used to love to ride the navigator slot when it was available. And if it's hard to see in the picture, of course, there was that little bubble on top of the aircraft where they, yeah, yeah. Well, we're actually, we're, you know, you take the section up and go and shoot the stars or whatever for position. So we flew one of these. I remember we flew one of these down to New Orleans also for something we were doing out there. I don't remember if it was the, the Sugar Bowl or what it was. I mean, Corbin been down there, different type playing the half type, for, uh, like New Orleans Saints, Baltimore Colts and whatnot. And uh, anyway, so... But some of the old, some of the old aircraft. Mm -hmm. I think the story here, there must have been some problems fisting people, you know, whacking them when you're putting your stripes on or something like that. <laughs> I'm guessing. And I believe that's uh, John Dye on the right-hand side, if you, as you look at this, I think. Who's that on the left? Oh, I'm sorry, John Crowder. Sorry, sorry. That's Crowder on the right. I'm drawing a blank on the left-hand side. I didn't know we were going for matching shirts, though. <laughs> Stripe shirts. Do wish I kept my hat, brass. So anyway, I got mine. I can't. Right. I've got. I've got mine. I've got mine and the patches. Yeah. Looks like brother Moravec in the middle for some reason. Of course, so this is from Pat Moravec. Well, that would only make sense. And it doesn't look like good things are going to be happening here, Bob. But you love this shot. <laughs> well, anyway, so that's what Crowder put together for tonight. Uh, like I said, it wasn't doing anything too terribly spectacular. I, on a personal note, I've, I'm finishing up a, a five-month work project. Last day of it's tomorrow, and oh, really, 
never, never say never. I'm ready for just a brief hiatus. So it's brief. I do enjoy working, but a brief hiatus would be okay for take a month off or something. Anyway, so I didn't put quite the time and attention into any of this that I should have for the uh, for this time out. I apologize for that. But anyway. Uh, anyway, and that's what I know tonight. Any anything from the other multitude of folks that are on this? Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think we I, th I think we managed to screw everybody up by going. No, we're going to make it on Thursday instead of Wednesday. So, but then the new time was not going to be available anyway, shape or style. You know, so, and he really enjoys doing this also. Actually, so do I. So, um, because uh, I told John I'll do a post academy life for the June meeting. Because of uh, conflicts, John would like to see if we can't do this on June 30th for the next one. Uh, recognizing, of course, it is summer, people have got lives and they do stuff. Uh, but any overwhelming resistance from the uh, five people, one, two, three, four or five people that are here tonight. That sounds good to me. Not here. Okay. Well, we'll get, the, we'll get the information back out again. And uh, away we go, and I'd say if, um, there is <laughs> Gary, are you still doing? You're still doing some playing with the uh, local uh, concert band or symphony or both or? Yeah, both. I, I play in uh, symphony and uh, wind ensemble. Uh, a couple of wind ensembles sometimes. A sub in a few of them, and I play trumpet in a, or a cornet in a brass band. That's right. <clears throat> talk about that because uh, uh, Bob Webb had. Uh, was we were talking about the uh, uh, pictures of the uh, uh, Civil War regalia, if you will, and, and some of the uh, some of the shots and whatnot. And uh, I think most of you probably speaking of Bob, uh, I think probably most of you already knew that his lovely bride lost uh, one of her legs below the knee or at the knee, uh, not too terribly long ago. So Janie, uh, Janie is still recovering from that, so it's not surprising we don't haven't heard anything from Bob for just a bit. If you hadn't heard, of, I guess I'm the bearer of those bad tidings. The good news is she's living and breathing, and that's important. So, mm. um, nice. And, and Gary, the extent of my plan right now is I'm doing the drum mule corps, which I'm still teaching pretty actively, and uh, don't exactly have a, a brass band that I could play with, because if I haul out my King K60 uh, French horn bugle, it'll just frighten people. So. <laughs> I don't think anybody plays those anymore. Um, Gary, what, what brass band are you playing with? It's uh, called the Old Pueblo Brass Band. Old Pueblo. I've made yeah. a couple of trips. I've made a couple of trips over to England and uh, uh, had made quite a few friends over there in some of those bands. Do you follow them at all, the British bands? Yeah, I played in a, a really good brass band back in Ohio. And uh, we actually flew over to England and played. Uh, we didn't compete, but we played at one of the competitions there. Oh, those groups, well, uh, those groups, those groups are amazing over there in England. Oh, they do. They do things that you just can't believe human beings do. They're just, they're just incredible. Um, I was, I, the last time I was over there was 2012. And I was I was over there for the uh, British Open at Royal Albert mm -hmm. uh, in uh, uh, Foden's. We had um, I, I had a buddy that was going with me. Uh, we'd made a bunch of friends with the Foden's people, and they were um, they they were real friendly, real real cordial towards us. Um, but they won it and that year. They won they won both of them. Mm. Um, but um, uh, and, and it. The contest, the contests are unreal. The the, uh, the finals there, the British Open, they had twenty bands, and they, and they all play the same test piece. Right. And, uh, you know, you you think if you're there all day long listening to twenty bands all play the same thing, uh, they've all got their own different interpretation of it. It's pretty cool. 
and the, well, they and the also pieces played. are just I, Go ahead. I, I know when we competed, we did a test piece, but we also played one or two other songs along with it. Yeah. And yeah. They different. they only they only did the test piece and it was about a uh, 17 minute about a 17 minute piece. Wow. It was uh, you know, written for the contest. Yeah. And one of the one of the judges, they had three adjudicators, they call them. One one of those was the guy that wrote the piece. Um, it was it was it was really something. I'm really glad I got to do that. It's a hell of an experience. Speaking of, if you want to hear something here. really crazy, Cor have you heard Corey Band at all? C O R E Y C O R Y Corey Band. I I know the name, but I don't know if I've heard. Them. Look, look, look them up. They're probably the hottest band right now. They're winning everything. Um, uh, look, you can find them on YouTube. Stuff they do is just, it'll, it'll just blow your mind. And, and, and they're, you know, and they're all amateurs. Yeah. Only they, they, they start their music lessons in the womb. I'm convinced of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're just unreal. Just totally unbelievable stuff they do. Couple of things. What, <clears throat> as a follow-on to that, um, there are a few tattoos that are held here in the United States, and uh, there's a new one, uh, the Washington tattoo, and it was going to begin in 2020, and uh, had to be canceled literally three days ahead because yeah, of COVID. yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's but they came back this year, uh, and I think you'll be looking at it on an annual basis. And, uh, some real interesting talent. A group, a group came in from Australia, a dance group, um, a Scottish style dance group from Australia came in and performed out this year also. It was a, a lot of real, a lot of real talent involved. Uh, I'll try to keep you guys. Do they, do, they, do they still? Do they still do the one in Norfolk that uh, yes, we they, they did do. those two conventions in? That yes, was good. Do. Yep, those were good. So as a matter of fact. Uh, um, the Air, the Air Force drum, our Air Force drum quartet, uh, Zar Foss and Eric Landis and Billy Mohica and whatnot, uh, were down there. Top Secret was there. Top Secret was there at the last one, and so they did a little drum off out on the, basically out on the dock yeah. if you know, between them. It was a lot of fun. Bob has talked about that. So, and of course Eric Landis passed on also. So, uh, which is really really unfortunate. Uh, you guys, a piece of secondary news, Roy Perez. By the way, Spike, he pronounces his name Perez, not Perez. <laughs> I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, oh, appreciate that. Okay. Well, how are, you, how are you to know if somebody doesn't mention it? Anyway, um, Roy's not on tonight. <clears throat> but the uh, we've talked about the Marching Pageantry Arts Museum. Uh, Bill Ives, the effort out of, uh, out of near Philadelphia to get that rolling. Uh, they actually got their uh, nonprofit status, so uh, starting ready to make some, uh, some more moves. So things are progressing there. Um, Al, I know uh, Al Ruat was putting together a little list of recordings and stuff for uh, potentially for uh, uh, further donations or at least getting a hold of the archives and stuff. A little earlier, uh, Spike and I were talking and uh, possibly about doing a uh, a brief featurette on here for the uh, technologically challenged, like myself, uh, <laughs> uh, better use of Facebook and uh, how to access some of the stuff like that is up there on, on files and whatnot. Uh, so that you could listen to some of these things that are, that are out there, which may not be a bad idea to incorporate as part of a future meeting. Not, not all of us operate at the same levels um, on that sort of thing. Um, and you were somebody who was supposed to remind me about taps across America, so I'll remind myself. Um, if you've got a horn and uh, on, uh, on Monday, uh, it is the day to, uh, well, Memorial Day, I should say. On Memorial Day, hopefully they'll get uh, folks all across the nation will play taps that day. Uh, kind of a national. Like three o'clock yes. Eastern? Was that three o'clock Eastern time? I think. Good question. 
I, and I repeat, I think. Uh, I have to do a double check. So I know like uh, uh, John Dye, Paul Mayer said, John Dye, I don't, I don't know if it, who was on this last meeting, but uh, John Dye expressed interest in, in, in playing taps. He didn't have a horn, and so Paul Mayer has a number of horns and sent John a trumpet so that he could do that. So I think uh, John is planning on participating in that, uh, in that process uh, this weekend. And uh, last year for Taps Across America, I grant you I'm not a horn player, but I did take my drum out, one of my drums, and I went out in the front yard and, and played a drum solo in honor, of, uh, in honor of our folks. And I plan to do exactly the same thing this year. So even, even though I don't play a horn, I'm still going to go out and offer, my, uh, offer the best I can do. Anybody got anything else? Well, yesterday I uh, attended the graduation at the uh, Air Force Academy. And the, the Thunderbirds were great as usual. The graduation, the graduation ceremonies were always so great because they had the flybys. Yeah. I remember, I remember the flybys were amazing. Yep. Remember they used to bring the U2 and the uh, Blackbird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Black that was cool. That was cool. I, I, remember the, I remember the first plane they flew by was a little Piper forward controller, forward air, aircraft or something. Next one they flew by was the C5 monster plane. It was incredible, yeah. the difference. <laughs> now they can fly a drone by. <laughs> yeah, I know. Speaking of flybys, does anybody remember that year where they blew out the windows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What oh, year yeah. was that? Was that 67 or 68? I'm thinking 68. That's what I would say, too. Is that, where the, guy, uh, is that where the guy came in really, really low and kicked in the yeah. afterburner? Flagpole. The whole, no, the whole squadron. He broke, the, he broke the sound barrier. <laughs> Over the academy the grounds, all the windows came out. Yeah. Yeah. Blew the windows out of the dining hall and and the uh, dorms. We were on the bridge at the far end. Yeah, I thought I thought my head had turned inside out. Well, I knew something. The one, like the one I remember is they came down. They came down between the cadet dining hall right. and that that classroom building that was over there. They were lower than the classroom building. Yeah. And and um, but flagpole high. <laughs> That's a weapon in itself. Wow. I've I've heard, tried to find I've tried to find something online for that. I can't find anything. I went to like the De uh, Denver Post, and I'm sure there were any number of careers that were launched by that. <laughs> it was one that ended. <laughs> one flying career ended. That colonel that was flying that, that lead plane. Yeah, we heard I didn't, got I didn't realize you guys were there for that. Oh yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> that was fun. Hey, one of these one of these days when we have like a whole herd of people on there, maybe uh, uh, Dick or Gary or Spike, were you there for that too? What for the when that happened? Yeah, Spike was there. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, hey, Gary was was the whole band there? Or just um, just just the, the drum corps, just yeah. the drum corps. We were we were down at the far end of the terrazzo. Yeah, in we, front of the dining in front of the dining hall. Right. Well, it was past the dining hall. It was just uh, I'm trying to remember the direction. That would have been north of the dining hall. I think there was a bridge down there. As I recall, we were on that bridge because I remember the bridge. Bounce up and down, <laughs> and and glass just flying everywhere. Right. And How about they, who would go ahead, Gary? I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say they. I remember they sent they sent uh, emergency vehicles all the way from Denver down. I think because there were so many hurt. Well, I tell you what, I just made a note of that. If, here's what I'm going to do: is I'm going to share that with John that we've actually got people over there that. I didn't know that. I mean, I, 
the story I've heard about, but I didn't realize that you guys were there. This, this is kind yeah. of fascinating, actually. And if, it, if I find it fascinating, I'm thinking there's probably about 25 other people that might find it fascinating, too. Because you, well, you know, me, you know, you know the way it leaves you. The way, the way I have to begin all of my stories these days is the way <laughs> I remember it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I, the, the way I remember it is we were, we were just in our usual formation in front of that, that statue with the eagles, man's flight right. through life, you know, all that stuff. And um, they were doing a little ceremony for the reason for it was they were making a new static di display of that plane and I, I think it was an f-100 but i would swear to that thunder chief I thought, something like that i thought we did it because there was a new general or somebody taking over the academy they were they having were a celebration they were dedicating the, a plane on the terrazzo oh, that, were they? that was that was the way i remember it they were they were dedicating okay. a new a new display of a, a new right. plane and it was a squadron of those planes that uh, a story I'd heard later that the punishment they gave to the um, to the guys to all of them was they sent them back to Vietnam, and that was what they wanted to do anyway. They were happy as heck to just go back and. Were they, were they flying F fours? Maybe. No, it, it uh, well, <laughs> as I remember it, I think they were F hundred F one hundreds, but. They, yeah. they, they def, it definitely wasn't the uh, Phantom Jet. De definitely wasn't the F-4, as I remember it. Well, I wrote this one down, so I don't forget to uh, get Roy to put this on an agenda at some point. How many, how many guys remember the day we were out on the, uh, on the, parade, on the parade field for a big deal, cadet parade, all stuff going on? And uh, lightning struck not too far from us, and and those guys that were climbing out of their tubas faster than you could imagine. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. Do you remember that, Dick? No, I, I'm I'm trying to. It's vaguely. I don't. You know, my memory isn't what it used to be, but. It's not, I can't hardly remember. I, I tell everybody I have a great memory. It's just real short, but um, <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't, I, it's a really called something about lightning, but I don't recall when it exactly had happened. I do remember that the plane flying by and blowing out all the windows. So that was like, yeah, that was one of the highlights of my time at the, at the academy. <laughs> yeah. Well, not only, not only the windows in the cadet dorms, but that yeah. Sound we went all the way down the hill and blew out yeah. the windows in the brand new gym that they made. Yeah. 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 That was the hell of a thing. I remember there were <laughs> upperclassmen that didn't have to be on the terrazzo. They were looking out their windows. Right. Whoa. And the glass just blew up in front of them. There were a lot of injured. Sure, there were. I remember. I remember that though, and I remember it as a single plane went through, at the breaking the sound barrier, and it, it, it the plane went by, and there was nothing, and all of a sudden it's kaboom, and that's when the windows went. Yeah, that's what I remember. It was a single yeah. plane. A single plane went flying through. There, there was a squadron of them went by, but a single plane yeah. went through, and that's when it happened. It, he was. It went by, and there was nothing, no sound or anything, and all of a sudden, it got bang. And then that's when the windows went. I think the windows went out, in, and out, <laughs> if I remember right. That would yeah, be pretty time. typical for something like that. Yeah. It had to be 67 or 68. It was in there that, that yeah, those I would, two years. I would say 68. 68. It could be. <laughs> Too much. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> I had a bunch of pilots around me. Uh, yesterday, and they were saying that the F-15s that the Thunderbirds were flying were only going about 450 miles per hour in the <laughs> show. Yeah. So that's uh, a lot slower than, than the sound barrier. Yeah, yeah, they got to be real careful about that, that sound barrier. <laughs> They also 
have to uh, inform the FAA the day before the show whether they're going to do their low flight show or their high flight show. Yeah. So apparently they've got two different shows that they can perform. And uh, I found that interesting. Mm. Yeah, you think of the clear traffic and everything else. Yep. Yeah. Well, I can remember some of the remember some of the, the, the way they were flying. It came off the mountains from the west and then shot right down in through the through the terrazzo level, right next to the church and right out onto the parade field. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul, speaking of the chapel, um, it's still uh, being renovated, right? Yep, they're saying it's going to take another four years. Four years? Yep. And wow. uh, it's going to be shut down for that whole time period. They've just recently reopened the... Uh, Planetarium, and and that was about two weeks ago. Wow. Hey, do you guys realize that? Remember the uh, the ramp from the parade field back up to the terrazzo. Above that, it had um, that slogan: "Bring me men." Bring me men. Yeah. They've had to take that down. Yep, that's all been changed. I can't remember what it says now, but uh, that's been changed. So no longer says bring me men to match my mountains. Well, of, of course, when we were there, there were only men. Right. <laughs> the end of the yeah. Academy. Yeah. Now there are women. And um, yesterday, there were 973 graduates. Um, and then there were about five or six that weren't allowed. They got their degrees but weren't allowed onto the field. They had to watch the graduation from the stands because they refused to take the uh, vaccination. vaccine. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I, I remember, I read about that. Yeah, they may be forced to pay for their entire education. Wow. And that hasn't been decided yet, but that's uh, what they're saying. Interesting. And uh, about, about 90 of those graduates are going into the Space Force. Interesting. 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 Hmm. And of course, they're, they're still fighting as to whether or not to keep the Space Force in Colorado Springs or to move it to Huntsville, Alabama. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Trump decided to move it to Huntsville uh, because he was getting so much support um, from the person that was running for state, uh, for uh, Senate. representative. For the Senate. Yeah, and for the yeah. Senate. And that's why he decided, even though uh, the Air Force wanted to keep it in Colorado Springs, uh, he decided it was going to move to Huntsville. So now the uh, the G, you know, whatever they call it, the general uh, investigator is saying that it's going to cost many millions more to move it to Huntsville than to keep it in Colorado Springs. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. So actually the headquarters for that's actually uh, over at Peterson, right? It's a, it's a joint base now, correct? That's, that's correct. The headquarters are at Peterson. Okay. Is, the joint, is actually, the joint base of Peterson, is that joint with the Space Command or do they uh, have... Navy and all other kind of people. Yeah, that's there. joint with the Space Command, with Army. Uh, yeah. And oh, yeah, because, because of NORAD. Yeah. 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 Speaking okay. of that, is, it, is there still a NORAD ban? No, the NORAD ban went out uh, in the mid, uh, about 72 or 73. Yeah, before the Corps went out. The NORAD ban was disbanded 
Uh, wow. Before the core was disbanded. I didn't realize that. That that was a band. Yeah. That was a band. There, there are still members of that band that live in the Springs, and we used to meet once a month with all the Air Force and military musicians, but when the, uh, uh, when the pandemic happened, uh, we stopped meeting. It kind of fell apart. Did Jack, did Jack Torty used to come to those? I understand he still lives in the Springs. Uh, Jack used to come to those, and now he's uh, totally lost his eyesight. And uh, so wherever he goes any place, he needs to have someone guide him along. Oh, that's a shame. And um, so that that's uh, pretty bad. And I haven't seen him now in about two and a half to three years. Yeah. Was he still playing? No, he wasn't playing anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, his eyesight went real quick. And I don't know what caused that, but uh, uh, at any rate, now uh, they say he's totally blind. That's truly unfortunate. Yep. Hey, Paul, I didn't, I didn't see you come in. Good no, to see you. I man. came in late. I came in a little after seven o'clock because we were still eating dinner. So. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, to back up for a second, the uh, I just did a quick Google. I just did a quick search, and it actually is Peterson Space Force Base. Yeah, home of the uh, home of the twenty first Space Wing, headquartered there. Uh, and there you have it. <laughs> well, it it only makes sense that they keep it here because. We sh still have Cheyenne Mountain that's still active. Yep. We have active. Air Force Base, which is still active. But of course, Pete Field and NORTHCOM and the Space Force. So all of that is all here in Colorado Springs. So uh, there's a lot happening here. And uh, it only makes sense financially to keep it here. Yeah, what was the Air Force Base you mentioned before you said Pete Field? Shriver Air Force Base. Where's and that? That that that's out east, uh, maybe about 15 miles east of uh, of Pete Field, out on Highway 94. Whoa. And it was built as the national test bed when Ronald Reagan was president, and. Uh, uh, they were testing all kinds of uh, different laser uh, uh, weapons and all kinds yeah. of stuff like that. And uh -huh. the main building is a four-story building with a core. And um, uh, I was fortunate enough to put all the comm systems in there uh, when I had my company that was doing video and audio. And the the uh, uh, the, the uh, floors, the computer floors, are about seven feet up off the base, so you can walk underneath those computer floors completely. Yeah. And uh, there are uh, trays for all the. Uh, secret communications and the regular communications and all of that is kept separate uh, all through the building. So it's a pretty interesting building and they spent millions and millions of dollars building that and to get into that building you have to uh, put your face up to this eye thing where it reads a retina scan uh, which allows you to go in or not. Yeah. Well, I hope they got, a cool I hope they got plenty of secret weapons because I think we're going to need them. Yep. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, clearly, uh, you know, this is the headquarters now and hopefully it stays that way. 
Interesting. Interesting. Thanks, Paul. So, Paul, if I decide to retire, is Colorado is still a good location? Well, uh, yeah. the problem is the population here has grown so much. The El Paso County population now is nearly a million people. Wow. With over 500,000 now in Colorado Springs. And, of course, we've got all these people from uh, the uh, from California moving here. Yeah. We have people from New York moving. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the problem <laughs> is, is that the politics that they left California for, they want they brought to them with them here in Colorado. Yeah. So yeah. that's not, we got we got the same way. we got the same thing here in Florida. Uh -huh. same thing in we, Arizona too. We got we got people driving around with uh, uh, bumper stickers that say "Don't New York my Florida." <laughs> <laughs> here it's uh, "Don't Californicate uh, Colorado." <laughs> and, uh, uh, now, that, that bumper sticker was about 30 years old originally. <laughs> yeah, and, and unfortunately, it's still going on. And, uh, you know, right now, the whole state is a blue state. We have a, a Democrat governor. We have a Democrat legislature, a totally a Democrat um, they outnumber the Republicans in the state legislature about uh, uh, about two thirds of the legislature is Democrat, and only about one third is Republican. So, uh, and then also here in Colorado, a couple uh, uh, about two and a half months ago, the legislature. Uh, decided to pass uh, a new abortions bill, which uh, allows abortion right up to the day of birth. And, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of conservative people that don't agree with that. Uh, but that's the law here now. So whatever happens uh, in the Supreme Court, it's not going to matter because uh, people here in Colorado are going to be able to get abortions right up to the the minute of birth. Yeah. Well, let, me, let me ask you a really important question. Since uh, I'm going to be a stand-up comic in my next life, <laughs> which is, so can I still buy a Girl Scout cookie out in front of a dispensary? Uh, probably. I'm just checking. <laughs> you know, uh, fortunately, uh, from a dispensary standpoint, um, Colorado Springs only allows uh, medical dispensaries. Uh, Manitou Springs allows recreational dispensaries. Uh, Pueblo allows recreational dispensaries. Denver allows recreational dispensaries. Uh, Douglas County doesn't allow any whatsoever. And again, that... Uh, uh, that is because it's a very Republican county, uh, and uh, they don't want to see any of that happening in Douglas County. So, what dispensaries? What are you talking about? Uh, marijuana dispensaries. Oh, 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 okay. And so okay. there's a, a difference between medical dispensaries for marijuana and uh, recreational dispensaries for marijuana. And when you drive up to Manitou, there are two uh, dispensaries there for recreational marijuana. And when you drive by those buildings, there are people uh, standing in line waiting to go in, sometimes 100, 150 people standing in line just waiting to go in to buy their recreational marijuana. Yeah. Uh, well, that's truly different than back in the day, but uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well. Okay. As John Crowder would say, anything for the good of the order. <laughs> 
<laughs> Although it's all been good for the order, good news and bad news, so all the above. Anything we need to know about? The only thing I saw was Paul Mayer joined us a little bit later. He's here. Hey, here. Hi, guys. Hey, Paul. How you doing, man? I'm good. Sorry good. to be late. I, somehow I misplaced my phone. <laughs> and I've been looking for it, and uh, everybody says, well, where did you leave it? <laughs> well, if I knew where I left it, I wouldn't have lost it. <laughs> so, you, so you arrived just in time for the dispensary discussion, and being a guy that, uh, you do some HR stuff, right? All the time. Well, uh, oh, well, but, 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 no, never mind. I was gonna, was, I'm sure it was a bad HR marijuana joke there someplace. Anyhow, <laughs> well, I, I I'm in favor of it uh, of the marijuana movement. I'm actually I, I'm high on the idea of it. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Mountain high. But anyway, yeah. Anything, well, hey, Paul? Do, do you do you have anything? We we talked a little bit about taps across America. You got any detail? Uh, somebody I forget who said was it at three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I mentioned you sent John Dye a horn. Phil said, my friend. Yeah, I think it's three o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. And uh, uh, I'm not going to be playing taps because I'm going to be marching with the American Legion on Monday. Cool. I'm going to be at the cemetery and there's other people playing taps. <laughs> Paul Mayer, how about you? Yeah, I, I have a, uh, let me look at my, I have an eight o'clock, 11 o'clock, a one o'clock, a three o'clock. At two o'clock and at three o'clock, so I have five tap taps or uh, engagements for Monday. Good for you. Yeah, it's good it, for you, Paul. It's a it's Dynamite. a great opportunity to opportunity to give back, and the uh, the people are very appreciative for sure. And uh, well, normally yeah. I'd be marching the Memorial Day parade up in Hanover, Pennsylvania, but I'm passing this year. I had uh, surgery in my foot a couple of weeks ago, and I'm gonna. Try and give it just about another week's week or two rest before I go uh, up and try and pound the pavement with an idea in a parade. <laughs> so, yep, heal up well. Been doing uh, actually, I'm very very pleased. So, uh, no no, appreciate the kind thoughts. Uh, no poor poor pitiful me. Uh, actually, I make I feel better on that side than I have in a long time. Didn't realize how bad it was. So. A good thing when all said and done. I, I see Gil McDonald's picture up there with uh, Dick Anderson. Yeah. Uh, his, Gil's birthday is this Saturday. I knew that, yeah. We're going to send a yeah. note to Pat. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Yes. I don't think you were on yet. Let me, let me back up, see if I can throw a slide on here. Um, oh, sure. Now he, now he can't find it. Uh, let me try again. Here we go. Okay, so there's uh, Smitty and Kathy and- Oh, great. Kathy. Yeah. Uh, of course, we we did this tonight. John John set these up. And so there's uh, that, that notice about Gil. Great. And I don't know if you've seen this before or not. I was there. Okay, okay. And the back half of the, of the stone. Yeah, that's the first time I had played taps with that little rendition of Air Force at the end. So down, I, I, so down here is that that's Air Force down here. That is I mean, up here is off we go. Yep. Okay. Being a drummer, of course, I wouldn't recognize that immediately. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have the key signature, so it's hard to read for drummers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bass. I'm a bass clef. I'm a bass clef. Tiffany Flair, give me a break, dude. Give me a break. Snare clef. Yeah. Did uh, you guys ever hear the story about Gil jumping into the swimming pool at bowling and there wasn't any water in it? Oh. Oh. That had to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, apparently there was uh, a little too much time spent at the NCO club that night. No. <laughs> yeah. And then? <laughs> Did he hurt himself? Oh, a little bit. Yeah, fortunately, 
you know, he had enough of the magic liquid in him that he didn't get hurt too badly. <laughs> he didn't go off the diving board, did he? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Or at least that's a story I heard from Jim Moore. Really, I, yeah. I had never, I had never heard that one. I spent a lot of time with Gil. That's the way uh, uh, Krauthammer got paralyzed. Yep. What I remember about Gil is that he liked to gamble. He loved that uh, slot machine, or not slot machine, that uh, pinball machine at the Buena Vista Hotel, where we used to go and get chili late at night is hot nasty chili and the the lady that made the chili would always come out and say i'm sorry it's not as hot as it should be tonight but he loved that stuff he we'd go there about one two o'clock in the morning and uh get chili and he'd play this mm. play that the pinball machine for money <laughs> pat used to get so mad at him he'd come home with no money <laughs> chili and lots of bread yeah lots of bread crackers and stuff it was good chili yeah mm. Mm. Well, well, back in 72, uh, we went to Las Vegas to play a uh, opening of, uh, I think it was State Farm or Allstate Insurance Convention. At the Frontier Hotel. At the Frontier Hotel, and we were scheduled to spend one night there. And uh, weather moved in over the mountains and we weren't able to fly out of there. And we ended up spending a couple extra nights at the Frontier Hotel. <laughs> By then, almost everybody was out of money. And, uh, you know, Bill Stokes was giving us a few dollars here and there. And uh, we were able to make it through till we were able to fly out of there. But uh, things got really tight because we spent all our money gambling the first night we were there. Yeah, and, if it, and then there's another part to that story, too, speaking of Bill Stokes. We were there when his wife was in that accident. Yep. And he couldn't get back. Yep. What a mess. And she was severely injured. The, the other thing about that uh, trip is that uh, some of the guys in the chorus started playing in the lounge with the lounge act that was there. <laughs> and uh, you know, they were able to get drinks that way. <laughs> Anything that works. That's true. Non-taxable income, that's good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, folks, I said I'll do my John Crowder imitation. Uh, June 30th is our target for the next one. Great. And uh, obviously, we'll send some, some information out. I'll, uh, I, I, I will try and do this is my life, which means nobody will show up, which is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> and uh, it won't be as exciting as Gary Hodges. And, and certainly not as interesting as Paul Olivier's believing in Paul Mayer. But anyway, um, we'll kind of take it from there. And uh, if we've got enough folks on board, I, I, I did make a note. Would love to hear again the story about the, the solo pilot blowing out the windows as he broke the sound barrier, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Interesting to know. I didn't realize some of you guys were there. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs>